this is Robin Norgren. I'm your host for Deeply Rooted. Wanted to check in with you again today and share some thoughts to help us all become the spiritual beings that we're longing to be living out human experiences. Every journey starts with a separation, a leave taking, a realization that the place you are right now is a place where you can no longer stay. Justine Musk. The choice to part ways with a bad idea, a wrong decision, a friendship or a relationship. Many people ascribe to the cliche that when someone makes their bed, they need to lie in it. And in some cases, the decision to do that might bring deep lessons that have far reaching value. But is there a decision that you are facing right now where you know you need to make peace and let go. Here is another exciting idea from the book, The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. 131 ways to spark creativity, find inspiration and discover joy in the everyday. This idea is start a collection. In 1977, furniture designer George Nelson published a book boldly titled How to See, an expansion of an earlier pamphlet written for the Department of Health, Education and Welfare. 25 years later, Design Within Reach founder Rob Forbes oversaw an improved reproduction of the volume. It's mostly a collection of pictures taken by Nelson, who observed that the work might have more honestly been titled, How I See. In a new introduction, Forbes called it, a book about the discipline of recording and assessing visual information. Nelson was a collection was a collector and he excelled in dreaming up interesting search images to hunt and document. Arrows, public clocks, manhole covers, street corners, geometric shapes, specific architectural designs, signs and objects prohibiting specific behaviors, ephemeral traces such as footprints, human, animal, or even, if you include tire treads, mechanical. Nelson's hunts were sometimes more conceptual. For example, he searched for contrast. He wrote, look for hardness and softness and the contrast between these two qualities. How to see included images of a flag outside a building, contrasting the rippling cloth and the solid wall, of the contrast between soft lips and hard teeth, of a blimp, a pliable thing rigidified by air. Isolating the qualities of hard and soft gets us to look in a special way, Nelson observed. About a dozen years after bringing Nelson's book back into the world, Forbes published his own set of photo collections under the title, title, See for Yourself. His searches included house numbers in Charleston, sewer tiles in San Francisco, along with more abstract angles and curves, texture and repetition, as well as contrasts between the very new and the very old, the natural and the built, the colorful and the drab, the crumbling and the pristine. My favorite of Forbes image series documents the surprising visual and physical diversity of bike locks in Amsterdam. Studies in materials and textures and colors as much as function, he writes. It's about observation and thinking. Forbes argues, when you discover something special out there, it's like stumbling into a cafe or a shop that was not listed in a tourist guide. Your experience of the world is much richer because you did it on your own. Are you one that collects images? 
perhaps words, thoughts. I've had quite a few friends where they have a book of quotes that move them, that they go to from time to time. And I have done a collection like that, very similar, where I would find images and I would find quotes and then I would write uh, my thoughts inspired by the quote and by the picture. It is really, I have all really enjoyed the exercise and it might be something you would like to try as well. Con consider doing something like this or maybe something that's um, coming up for you, maybe inspiring you to do that is along the lines of something that you're interested in. Here's some thoughts from a book um, by Henry Nowen called Spiritual Direction. And this is included in my series on how to find a spiritual director. The temptation to doubt who you truly are. Jesus' temptations in the desert described in the Gospel of Luke are temptations to move him away from that core identity. He was tempted to believe he was someone else. You are the one who can turn stone into bread. You are the one who can jump from the temple. You are the one who can make others bow to your power. Jesus said, no, no, no. I am the beloved of God. I think his whole life is a continual claiming of that identity in the midst of everything. There are times in which he is praised, times when he is despised or rejected. But he keeps saying, Others will leave me alone, but my Father will not leave me alone. I am the beloved Son of God. I am the hope found in that identity. The greatest trap in life is not success, popularity, or power, but self-rejection, doubting who we truly are. Success, popularity, and power can indeed present a great temptation. But their seductive quality comes from the way they are part of the much larger temptation to self-rejection. When we have to come to believe in the voices that call us worthless and unlovable, then success, popularity, and power are easily perceived as attractive solutions. How quickly we gave in to the temptation of self-rejection. For example, I remember speaking to thousands of people and many would say, that was wonderful what you said. But if one person stood up to say, hey, I thought it was a lot of nonsense, that was the only person I would remember. Whenever I feel criticized, rejected, or left alone, I find myself thinking, well, that proves once again that I'm a nobody. Instead of taking a critical look at the circumstances or trying to understand my own and others' limitations, I tend to blame myself, not just for what I did, but for who I am. My self-rejection says I am no good, I deserve to be pushed aside, forgotten, rejected, and abandoned. Can you somehow identify in yourself the temptation to self-rejection? whether it manifests itself in arrogance or in low self-esteem. Self-rejection can show itself in a lack of confidence or a surplus of pride. Neither is a true reflection of the core of who we are. Often, self-rejection is simply seen as the neurotic expression of an insecure person. But neuroses is often the psychic manifestation of a much deeper human darkness. The darkness of not feeling truly welcome in human existence. Self-rejection is the greatest enemy of the spiritual life because it contradicts the sacred voice that declares we are loved. Being the beloved expresses the core truth of our existence. We are loved as creatures with both limitations and glory. 
I am putting this so directly and so simply because though the experience of being the beloved has never been completely absent from my life, I am slow in claiming it as my core truth. I kept running around it while looking for someone or something able to convince me of my belovedness. It was as if I kept refusing to hear the voice that speaks from the very depth of my being saying, you are my beloved, on you my favor rests. That soft, gentle voice that calls me the beloved has come to me in countless ways. My parents, friends, teachers, students, and the many strangers who crossed my path have all sounded that voice in different tones. I have been cared for by many people with much tenderness and gentleness. I have been taught and instructed with such patience and perseverance. I have been encouraged to keep going when I am ready to give up and was convinced to try again when I failed. So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started.